Today I want to share with you my story of how I was able to generate seven figures with my e-commerce dropshipping store. Now not many dropshipping or e-commerce content creators out there are willing to share their store or maybe they just grabbed it from the web. Who knows? I'll be providing full transparency of my store, my ads and how I was able to achieve this milestone within one year. First, let me tell you a bit of my background. I've been running e-commerce stores for several years now. I first started my very own Shopify store in 2018, which I'm still running and it's generated over eight figures in sales. That's gonna be another video in another time. But within five years, I was able to generate multiple seven-figure stores and tons and tons of six-figure stores as well. However, when I first started, I didn't know what to do. I had a lot of mistakes, but over time, I learned my lessons. I was able to quit my job and do this for full time. So the store that I'm gonna be revealing today is my second seven-figure store. And let me tell you, I did things differently because I learned a lot of lessons from all the stores that I have failed in the past. I've spent millions and millions of ads and that helped me scale stores up to seven figures. So today, let me share with you how I was able to create this branded drop shipping store. As most of you know, the crucial step of becoming a successful drop shipper is finding that winning product. Back in 2019, at the start of COVID, I was having foot problems and I went on Google and I tried to find products or supplements that can help me with this issue. I knew firsthand how frustrating it is, so it was important for me to alleviate the pain and I was able to find a solution for that by just doing my own research on Google. I found this particular product, which is the foot massager. By focusing on finding a solution first and solve a personal problem, I was able to tap into a niche market who was also experiencing the same issue that I had, which is plantar fasciitis. This strategy helped me to differentiate myself from dropshipping competitors and ultimately led to seven-figure success. After looking into the market demand, competitors, and the profitability potential of the foot massager, I knew I just had to go in and test this particular product. This was a huge opportunity for me because first thing I did was look for competitors and there was only one competitor or one brand that was doing millions and millions of dollars already but organically and that was a market that I wanted to tap in because with my skills especially with Facebook ads and also influence marketing I was able to capitalize on that and hence led me to scaling my store up to seven figures. There was also other reasons why I wanted to test the foot massager product. First off is there was a huge profit margin. I think I was getting it for about $60 and selling it first around $110 and I was able to uh, price test up to $130. So there's about $70 to $80 profit margin in there and that's really huge, especially in the drop shipping space. Another reason why I like this product is because I was able to find a local supplier who was willing to help me uh, drop ship this product within USA. Hence, I'm able to do shipping within a three to five business day. Now let's jump onto my analytics and to show you how I was able to progress this store. So right here, you can see within two years, uh, I was able to, or I'd say one and a half years, I was able to generate over $2.2 million for this particular product, which is the um, premium foot massager. And if we just jump into the first few months of this store, you'll be able to see how we progress this store. So that's about a month in. I was already about $27,000 in. So within two months, we'll see that, hey, we've hit the six figure mark. Right here, $113,000. So that's that's a good, good sign, right? Our conversion rate wasn't the best, but it was increasing already. Our average order value, we were able to bump it up to $132. The reason for that is because I was doing a lot of price testing. Now, moving forward, we got our store custom coded, so it's not your uh, simple theme anymore. The reason for that is we wanted to test different CRO, and this was the easiest way for us to do that. So let's move this to a couple more months, so from May to October, so that's about six months in, and hey, there is consistency in here. 
we went from $110 AOV up to $140. Our conversion rate slightly decreased, but our profit was still good. We tested a lot of upsells and bundles, and that really boosted our store. And having a bigger profit margin means we can spend more with Facebook ads. We started adding other products in here. Now, our local supplier in USA helped us with this as well. We also included email marketing and implemented influence marketing in here for the UGCs. Now all of the products are located in USA. This is very crucial because it allows us to beat our other dropshipping competitors. And this was really good because it's a heavy product. You can't really see it from AliExpress. Otherwise you're gonna be paying extra $80 for shipping. And this local supplier really helped us scale this business. I wasn't worried about dropshippers out there copying my product because I know for a fact that they won't be able to create a branded e-commerce store like this if they don't have access to local suppliers. So that's a good lesson for you guys to learn. So moving on to the advertising. So we created about three ad accounts in here. I'll be showing you guys one of the ad accounts that we uh, advertised on. This is already disabled actually, but I will expand on that later on. So if we just jump on to our ad account in here, we spent about $537,000 in this um, ad account in here. On other ad accounts, we spent a total of about $300,000. So if you join that together, uh, our total ad spend was around um, $800,000. And the total sales was around 2.2 million dollars in revenue so let me tell you the structure of this particular ad account in here we simplified it into four components so the four campaigns that we did was a testing campaign a scaling campaign a manual bid hyper targeting campaign and finally retargeting campaign now the third one i'll explain to you right now so that one is the manual bid, which I already done a video on. This is usually our highest campaign spending. So with this structure, what we do is we just do bid control, manual bid. We have broad audiences in here, you can see here. And also we, we got a couple of interests in here. We got a couple of broads in there. We got mixed interest targeting in there as well. But each ad set will have multiple ads in there. These are already your winning ads. Like I said at the start, first campaign that you are going to make is your testing campaign. You must test a lot of video ads if you want to be able to scale your ad accounts up to this level. So what I mean by that is every week we'll be testing five to 10 different creatives. And if that shows good signs, it's gonna move on to the scaling campaign. And if that's still profitable, it's gonna go to this campaign in here, which is one of our highest spender, like I said before. Now, the fourth campaign is just retargeting campaign. Okay, let's talk about what happened to the store, why, why we stopped it. There are two things that happened. We got DMCA for another product that we tested. We actually got a third party to do our video editing and I didn't know that they were using different kinds of contents th that are not ours. And our first ad account got banned and the second one as well got banned. So it was just very difficult to catch the momentum again. And after creating the third ad account, we just couldn't get it back to the profitable state anymore. Now, another reason for that is that the COVID hype was already over. Now, if you just jump onto the analytics from 1st of October, 2020, this was like the hype of COVID, right? Up to 2021 of January, we scaled almost seven figures within a couple of months. And again, there was a lot of testing that went behind this and we capitalized on the hyper uh, hyper bid scaling but after that we just couldn't get it back anymore we got banned uh, somewhere in 2021 uh, we tried to scale it even further um, actually our biggest month was around uh, Feb and we did about 500k in that month so we got banned around this time so May and then June June we just you know didn't have an extra ad account we we're able to get a new one in july but again we tested and just couldn't get it back to where it was before 
and we realized hey the, the hype is probably not there we looked at google trend it was not there anymore and we also analyzed our competitor who was doing seven figures per month organically they weren't selling as much anymore as well so we kind of just had to stop it we didn't want to take risks anymore uh, because we were just losing money after uh, the end of 2021. Now, what are the lessons that we learned from this store? The first one, which is at the top of the list, is finding a local supplier. First off, other dropshippers won't be able to compete with you because you have better customer experience because you're able to ship your products within three to five business days. This also leads to advertising platforms favoring your business because again, you're showing better customer experience and you're less likely to be banned. The second lesson that we learned, try your best to use your content. Otherwise, you're gonna be DMCA'd and this is what happened to us. We got copyrighted or trademark or whatever. That's a big painful lesson that we had to learn. The third lesson is look for products that are higher profit margins. So you'll be able to spend more with your Facebook ads and hence take a bigger risk. The next lesson is identifying demand. Do your own research. Make sure that you understand who your customers are understand who your suppliers are and also your competitors so that you can create a high converting landing page and better content for your advertising effort. The last lesson that we learned from this store is build SOPs for your team. So for our particular store, we were about four to five people within the team. Someone was doing customer service, someone was doing uh, ads for us, and also uh, someone was doing media buying and finally email marketing make sure you build SOPs so that you can simplify this and you can you as yourself can focus on the growth of the business so those are the big lessons that i learned from this i hope you guys learned a few things from this video if you did make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so i'll see you guys soon